I want to tell you two words right now. Don't worry. Now, lest you think that comes from me, let me make a correction. That comes from Jesus. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, Jesus says three times, Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. He says, stop worrying in verse 25, 31, and 34. Now you say, but how practical is that given all that we're facing, the unknowns, the crisis, the sickness? Is that a practical expectation of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, yes, it is because he commands us not to do it. We have a legitimate right for legitimate concern. What we don't have the right to do is worry. God does not expect us not to deal in reality. If you're sick, you're sick. If you're struggling, you're struggling. But that's different than worry. Concern you own. Worry owns you. The believer should not worry. Now, Jesus is not saying we shouldn't be concerned about the needs of life. He's not saying we shouldn't be concerned about food on the table, clothes on our back, a roof over our heads. But what he is saying is don't worry about these things. Worry is not a good thing. Worry is a failure to trust God. And so we can sleep and we can rest in the Lord knowing that our God is still in control and he's on his throne working in our life. In fact, Jesus even goes a little deeper because he says, if you're controlled by worry, he says, O ye of little faith, in verse 30 of Matthew 6. Many people believe in God who still worry because they have little faith. But now, how do you measure little faith? How do you know? Well, if you're worrying and that's become your pattern, you know you have little faith. And that's because of the size of your God. You see, the size of your faith is tied to the size of your God. When you shrink God, you automatically shrink faith. So if you and I have little faith, it's because we're operating with a small understanding and view of God. So the way you get more faith is not going faith hunting. The way you overcome worry is not by trying to tell yourself and talk yourself into not worrying. It is to expand your understanding view of and submission to God. Because when we grow him, your faith will grow with it and your worry will shrink and become responsible concern. You know our problem? We believe in a God who we do not understand as a father. We hear it in our prayers, oh great Father and God, creator of the universe, who spun creation into being simply by the voice and word of his mouth. All of that's true. He says that I want you to look at him as a father when it comes to not worrying. He says, I want you to look at him as a father and understand that this father cares for you. Philippians 4 says, when you are tempted to be ang anxious, that's an invitation to pray. So you always know you're supposed to pray because it always should be connected when you're tempted to be a worrier. And get your growing focus on God who is able to calm your fears. So I want you to calm down. You don't live in panic when you know you have a heavenly father. If you want to get over your worry, Here's what I want you to do. Verse 33. And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. He can't be second. The moment you put God in second place, you've removed him from engagement with your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God must be put in priority, but not just because you say the word, God is first in my life. That's 
nice religiosity. No, he must be functionally first, not philosophically first. He must be functionally first, not merely verbally first. And how do you know when God is first? Because he takes priority in your decision making. When you have to choose what you will do or won't do, he wins the choice. If he does not win the choice, he's not first, no matter how often you use his name. And what should we be looking at when we put him first? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his rule in your life. God's kingdom is his rule, that he gets the final decision over everything that has to do with you. That makes him first. Seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. Put God first in your life. Put God first in your priorities. Put God first in your marriage. Put God first in your singleness. Put God first in your career. Put God first in your finances. Honor the Lord. Let him have his way in your life. And God's plans for you are better than your plans for yourself. Don't be afraid to commit an unknown future to a known God. Put God's kingdom first and turn your panic into prayer. If you don't want to live in fear, anxiety, and worry, put your concerns in the hands of God. He does not want to be one of many. He wants to be prioritized over the highest priority you have in your life because when you have to make a choice, you choose him or his way of doing things. That's why you are to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. His righteousness is his standard. What is his standard on this issue? What is his standard on my life? What is his standard on my relationships? What is his standard on myself? What is his standard on this thing I want to do. What is his standard? And when I submit to his standard and relate to him as my father, because it's a relationship thing, not just doing it because he says do it. He's a relationship. God wants a relationship and he wants a close one, an intimate one with you. He says, when you do this, I got you. Now, does that mean there won't be challenges? No, because then there would be nothing to pray about. Does that mean there won't be trials? No, because that means there's nothing you have to trust him for. But it says that you will not face those trials by yourself. They actually will become opportunities. It's much more helpful if you'll stop asking why, why is this happening, and start asking what? What do you want me to learn? What do you want me to become? How can I grow from this? How can I become a better woman? How can I become a better man through this crisis? Yeah, I'm being tested. I'm not gonna worry about the why. Why doesn't really even matter. What matters is what? What am I gonna become? And what am I gonna learn from this situation? The devil means to defeat you with these problems, but God means to develop you through these problems. He wants to defeat you, Satan, but God wants to develop you. He says, so do not worry, verse 34, about tomorrow. For tomorrow will care for itself. For each day has enough trouble of its own. Most people are crucified between two thieves, yesterday and tomorrow. Do you know today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday? Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Uh, so let yesterday go, trust God for tomorrow, and be at peace with him right now. If he has you here today, I believe he's got you today. You plan for tomorrow, but you live by faith today.